I would like to invite Rita Vidyadana to share some tips for gender sensitive and responsible reporting. Rita is a very senior columnist and former editor of Jakarta Post Indonesia. She's currently based in Bali, one of the cities of my dreams. Over to you, Rita. Many thanks, Soba. Many thanks. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you again for uh, uh, allowing me to be part of this uh, very important discussion. Thank you, Bo Bobby. Thank you, Soba, uh, for inviting me. Uh, I would like to share, uh, not tips, but my experience uh, of uh, writing a gender issue in my country, in Indonesia. Uh, what challenge, talents do, uh, did we uh, face during the course of our works? And maybe uh, this is just a, a highlight, a brief summary. Maybe we can uh, start following this uh, with uh, live discussion. And I really want to uh, hear about the experience of my college here from the Asia Pacific region so we can have a uh, connection and uh, improve our understanding of each particular region and how we can improve our work as a journalist, as an advocate and as a uh, maybe policymaker here. And I hope that you still have energy after three days, after two days. Uh, and this is our concluding uh, session. Yes, uh, uh, Soba, this is yes, our yes, concluding. Yes, yeah, yes, okay. yes. Uh, maybe uh, I will just start. Uh, uh, I'm. I was in, at the Jakarta Post uh, Morning Daily in Indonesia and English uh, Daily, and uh, after that, I'm start uh, becoming a freelance journalist and writers, especially focusing on child and women rights issue, on health and development, and. I start uh, joining Soba and Bobby to be a member of the Asia Pacific um, Journal Media Alliance for Health and Development. Uh, maybe we can start and then we can follow with uh, our discussion. Forgive me, uh, this is Bali. So my house is next to a school which is now practicing Gamelan Orchestra, I, I'm, I'm, I do apologize for the loud voice. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe we can start. Um, yes, um, my, my focus today is how, uh, as a journalist, we have the responsibility to write and to uh, produce writing that is promoting gender equality because uh, the media plays a very significant role in shaping public perceptions about women and men. And therefore it is important that reporting avoids any forms of gender set stereotypes, which often limit and trivialize females and males, as well as presenting an inaccurate view of the world and its possibility. Furthermore, the use of stereotypes reflect a mental block, not only in terms of what society may expect from women and men, but also more seriously in terms of what women and men may expect from themselves. This is I'm quoting from the UNESCO. Okay, uh, Bobby. Next screen, okay. Uh, why is gender? because gender is everywhere. We live in society that are consisted of men and women and throughout history, different cult culture have attributed different roles, limitation and privilege for men and women. Gender refers to the aspect that a society or cultures, forgive me, this is uh, Azan, forgive me. Gender involves the socializations of boys and girls and the roles conferred to men and women. But this definition may change and differ in each society throughout the story, history. 
So, Bang, may I stop a little bit because this yes. is too loud? No, I think we can hear you clearly. It's, I okay. think your voice is fine, yes. Okay, thank you. Is it disturbing, the voice? No, it, it is there, but uh, it's fine. We can hear you clearly. So okay, please. thank you so much. So we can uh, continue, yes, Bobby. Yes. Okay, gender concepts are found in all aspects of life, including journalism. This is very important because journalist works cover all aspects of life. When the concept of gender is understood, society will become healthier and more equal. According to Judith Butler, a, a very expert in gender, gender is a performative, that is, it is actively produced within social interaction. And media being an integral part of this proof of social construction, it is thus legitimate to explore the gender dimensions of news production and reception. So we know all that quality journalism is ethical journalism and that ethical journalism include full and fair representations of action, opinions, concerns, and aspirations of women around the world. That's according to WWA, she's Deputy General Secretary, Lavinia Moore. So we know our responsibility as a journalist. Uh, next, Bobby. So in order to achieve that, we have to apply gender sensitive reporting as our responsibilities as journalists and writers. So we are all aware that each story rewrite must answer the five W and one H. Who, what, where, when, why, and how. The same questions can be applied to gender sensitive journalism as outlined before. Bobby, next screen. So we start with the first W, who, who can do that. All journalists can play a role in changing attitude toward women and gender-based stereotypes. The second W, what, to be more aware of gender issue and integrate this awareness into our work. To be sensitive to gender inequalities, to portray and treat women and men in fair and just manner. To produce coverage that is complete and diverse, it is essential that the news mirrors the world as seen through the eyes of women as well as men. And the third Y, the third W is why. Why gender sensitive reporting is essential to contributing to a more balanced representations of society. Gender equality is an integral part of freedom of expression, which is our human rights. Fair and gender portrayal is an ethical aspiration like respect for accuracy, fairness, and honesty. Bobby? Where, where can we apply this gender <coughs> equality in our news organi organization, be it newspaper, television, radio, social media, in short, in all forms of media at the managerial level, where the general directions are made, in the editorial department, where decisions are made about stories to be covered, and in the field when information is being gathered. When, from now on, start now. How? By being aware of the language we use, by being open-minded and fair, and through careful selections of stories and the resource and sources, the natures of news, the choice made about what is newsworthy, and the way the story is reported must change. Women need to be used more as the sources and subject of stories. They need to be interviewed as commentators and experts. 
Next. So uh, with this in mind, uh, we still see a, a bleak pictures in the media profiles in our Asia Pacific region. Uh, according to a study by UN Women Asia Pacific, women are entering the media professional in a large number, yes. Yet their representation across, across all areas of the media remains inadequate. On average, across Asia and the Pacific, women make up 28.6% of the media work, workforce. However, the proportion are lower in decision-making roles in media organization where women make up only 17.9% of executive roles, 19.5% of senior editorial, and 22.6% of mid-level editorial positions. Women continue to be restricted by stereotypical bits and face more job insecurity, lower wage, and gender discrimination, but they are actually multi-skilled and usually working more bits than men. The worst thing is sexual harassment remains a key issue with 34% journalists in Asia and the Pacific saying they had witnessed sexual harassment at work at least seven 17% of female journalists have personally experienced workplace sexual harassment and 59% of the time, it is a superior who is the perpetrators, which is uh, this harrowing situation for us. Uh, next, Bobby. Okay, so, this is our uh, responsibility to ask ourselves as a media people, as a gender advocate, especially for media. This is the important checklist. Does your media house have a program on diversity and representations of women at the senior management level? Does your organization have a policy to equip women so that they can be considered for senior positions? Does your organization have policy on sexual harassment procedures and process for dealing with complaints? Does your organization have a gender policy and it is, is this well known to all employees? Does your organization regularly sensitize staff on gender bias, stereotypes, and discrimination on the basis of sex? Ideally, the answer to each of the questions should be yes. Any no response is a call for action. So we have to uh, contemplate ourselves. We have to check with our own news organization whether we have all this program to promote gender quality. Okay, um, next, Bobby. So this can be achieved when we careful use of language and image, because we are journalists, we are writers, we are advocates, because language matters. Language does not merely reflect the way we think, it also shapes our thinking. If words and expression that imply that women are inferior to men are constantly used, that assumptions of inferiority tends to become part of our mindset. Hence, we need to adjust our language when our ideas evolve. Next. As journalists, writers, and advocates, we continue to struggle choosing the proper words in our stories and making sure every word we pick convey the correct message. Gender-sensitive journalism requires media people to be careful not to fit into the cycle of sexist news making. Journalists have a responsibility to not reproduce it with our use of words, 
expression and ways of storytelling, which might it advertently reflect and even reinforce gender power dynamics and stereotyping. Next. Bobby, next. So we have to focus on our words, our sentence, our phrase when writing stories. Because sexism is inherent in many expression in almost all language, our own language, our local language. We hear they every day, every minute, because we were born in that society. There are many sayings which are used to denigrate the role of women, such as to behave like a woman. This expression is used as it as depicts women as weak and when men demonstrates cowardice or weakness in any situation, the expression is used to describe their behavior, to behave like women. And then crying like a girl, that's that, oh boy, don't cry. That's such a demeaning phrases. Crying is often perceived as weakness. Many parents use these phrases when trying to calm young boys when they are crying. These words are meant to demonstrate that only girls can fend their emotion by allowing them to cry in public, while boys are expected to be strong. This another demeaning phrases, men's words. Those who want to be sure of each other's words sometimes use the phrase, give a man's word. This suggests that only men can be trusted to keep their word, not women. This kind of phrases that we have to avoid in writing our works. Next, Bobby. Okay. This may be simple tips when we when we start writing. Always question the words and expression we use. Trace the root. Many expressions you have been hearing and using for years may contain sexist implication that you had not noticed until now. It is always useful to discuss the language with your editorial team and your colleagues while writing the news using active sentence instead of passive is always important. Pay close attention to doing so, particularly when writing stories about women and girls. Next. Next. Well, this is journalist responsibilities. Actually, it's all responsibility, all people responsibilities. First, fight against cliches. Good storytelling and gender sensitive journalism should avoid cliches because most of them are actually gender related. But gender cliches are everywhere. Like women's fights against cellulite, these cliches imply that women are obligated to conform to beauty norms, which are widespread worldwide. Number two is judgmental language. Another common mistake is the use of judgmental language. This is the major issue we need to tackle for the sake of gender sensitive reporting. Again, accuracy is fundamental to good journalism, journalism but we know that it's not easy task and that it's not always possible to achieve. Research must be done carefully and facts must be checked and even cross-checked. Whenever possible, we should collect information firsthand by being there, but it, all, it is not always possible. If it's not possible, we should talk to those who were there. However, it is important to be aware of the differences between primary and secondary sources. We always make sure that we do not reflect exaggeration and gender bias judgments. We should be committed to being objective in our reporting. Next. 
fighting stereotype. Stereotype is a term used to define all people of a certain group as having certain behavior or characteristic, usually negative. Stereotypes are often wrong and can lead to discrimination. They offer simplify the reality and usually form the basic of prejudice. We as journalists and writers are members of our own society and have been shaped by that culture. And therefore we might therefore apply our cultural stereotypes to our news item without thinking, thereby inadvertently reinforcing them, deepening inequality and paving the way for stigmatizations and prejudice because this is unconsciousness because it's deeply ingrained in our mind because we live there in that society. Okay, next, Bobby. So there are many stereotypes attributed to gender. Here are some of the common female and male stereotypes. Female is always uh, portrayed as dependent uh, while male is independent. Male, weak, while male is powerful, male is always, female is always emotional, while male is logical. Female is always depicted as housekeepers, while male is portrayed as breadwinners. Female is always uh, portrayed as fragile, and male as protectors. Female, soft-spoken, and male, outspoken. This is stereotypes that we always hear that every minute, every hour, every day. So this is, this is uh, very important that we start uh, fighting these stereotypes in our news. Okay, next, Bobby. So the most common stereotype we, we produce as journalists in our stories, one, portraying women as extreme. If they do not fit the stereotype, for example, an unmarried woman who is sexually active is often portrayed as a sinner. And a woman who challenges a man, I'm sorry, I omit that, is always pictures and aggressive. Women always be portrayed as sex object. Many studies have proven that the media frequently portray women as sex object for men to look at and fantasize about. In news and advertising, image focus on women's body and their looks. The impression that women have nothing else to contribute to society. The third one, is portraying women as victims. In many humanitarian crises, women are often portrayed as suffering victims. Women do suffer, but they also perform many heroic acts, such as rescuing the elderly and children. Portraying them predominantly as victims diminishes their roles in the society. Next. So this is our job is making women exist and visible in our news because this is the data is uh, portraying uh, unfavorable uh, pictures of our activities. So the word that journalists describe in the news media remain largely masculine. The 2015 global, global Media Monitoring Project revealed that women make up only 24% of those heard, read about, and seen in newspaper, television, and radio news. The report also said women relative invisibility in traditional news media has crossed over into digital news delivery platforms. Only 26% of the people in the in internet news stories and media news tweets are women. Only 4% traditional news and digital news stories explicitly challenge gender stereotype. The International Labor Organization study reveals 
almost half of news stories, 46%, reinforce gender stereotypes. The studies say media representation normalizes the exclusions of women and girls. Women only make up 20% of expert news sources. The lack of inclusion of women experts has serious consequences. When male experts are prioritized, women's hard work and contribution are devalued and they are robbed of the recognition and public acclaim they deserve. Only 6% of news story highlight issue of gender equality and equality. This is saddening news then we have to work very hard to improve this situation. Next, Bobby. Okay, this is tips. When we cover about any event, we have to ask ourselves the question, where are the women in this event and this new story? Ask ourselves how this event will affect women the answer to this question will give you the, the gender angle. Simply asking whether there is a women perspective to the story also helps. Try to find the women angle in the story. Look at women's rights struggles, follow civil society organization, which are working for women and girls and draw attention to their efforts. And we can also cover women scientists, women doctors, politicians, lawyers. So we put them in equal position in the society. So this is our uh, responsibility as journalists and writers. Next, Bobby. Uh, this is very difficult issue that most uh, journalists uh, think about covering gender-based violence because it's very uh, sensitive. Um, many are covered by taboo and uh, it's against the social norms in some society. So uh, this is challenging a situation for any journalist to cover gender-based violence. Uh, we can uh, define gender-based violence as any harmful act that is perpetrated against any person's will and that is based on social ascribed differences between males and females. GBV serves as an umbrella terms which contains many acts like rape, sexual assault, domestic violence, child marriage, harmful traditional practice like female genital mutilations, trafficking in persons and various forms of mental and physical abuse. Journalists really need to expand their awareness on the issue. They need to learn about gender-based violence before writing, before covering, before reporting. So they, they have to learn deep, deep and gain of insightful knowledge on this particular issue before we produce news, before we spread message, before we reporting this issue to the white public. So they know exactly what they are talking about. They know exactly what they are writing and the impact of their writings on the survivors, the community, and most of all, on the perpetrators. So this is the basic principle of covering GBV. Never forget empathy. As journalists, we should never forget that individuals we speak with are all survivors. Many still write that they are victims, as Soba told us yesterday. Please use the term survivors instead of victims. They, they, are, they have suffered from trauma or harmful act and therefore very vulnerable. It is our responsibility to treat them with careful and respectful. The word choice 
victim versus survivor. While covering GBV news, there are certain terms that we should be very careful about using. The person subjected to GBV is often described in our news as victim. This is very wrong. Using this word survivor instead of victims is much better choices. Always respect privacy. Never share all the detail. All journalists, we all know that the 5W and 1H rule. But when covering GBV news, we can sometimes put this rule aside, writing the name of survivor who prefer to keep their identity confidential, giving detailed information could lead to serious and irreparable, irreparable consequences. So we should not expose the, 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 the name of the identity of the survivors and make your story accurate. The story should not be written in a sensitive way and it should not be dramatized or romanticized. Unnecessary detail of sexualism and violence have no place in our news. Bobby? So this is ethical principle to consider while covering a GBV story. First is accuracy. Journalist interviews should be sensitive. They should also be sure that their reporting is factually correct. Fairness. Journalists should be fair and honest with interviews. When speaking to those who have ex experienced GBV, Journalists are responsible for protecting their potentially vulnerable sources. Imparci impartiality. We are newsmakers. This is not our job to judge or to discriminate. Journalists should be extremely careful when adding details that could unintentionally shift the focus of blame away from the aggressors. Duty to inform. Using an overabundance of personal details can sensationalize the news item. This should be avoided. Respecting privacy. To fully respect the privacy of GBP survivors and their loved ones, we should be careful how we present the information in order to avoid the possibility of jigsaw identification taking place. Sources, the main principle of journalism is to protect our sources. It's crucial, particularly for GBV news. For example, publishing the address of women's shelter or women's house in a piece or on male violence could have serious consequence. So this is do no harm principle. This principle has three angles. Showing sensitivity to people who are trau traumatized to survivors and actors. Being aware that the subject of the interview may be inexperienced in dealing with the media. And understanding the balance between the public's right to information and the suspect right for a fair trial. When dealing with GBB survivors, we should always prioritize their best interests and adhere to the principle described earlier. Next, Bobby. Yo, this is very difficult, uh, how to interview a sexual assault and rape survivor. Journalism is not an easy job. It can include many difficult situations and interviewing a sexual or rape Survivor is certainly one of the hardest tasks for us. But here are some tips maybe. Start with an open-ended question like, tell me about your experience. Be sim sympathetic, but keep it short. Start the conversation with something like, I'm sorry about what happened to you. Identify yourself and the media outlet you work for and indicate who they likely audience will be. Tell the survivor why you are there and with what it is that you want. 
maybe it may be difficult for female survivor to tell their story to men and for male survivor to talk to women. If the interviews cannot be a person of the same sex, make sure that the survivor is comfortable talking with someone of the opposite sex. Explain that you will not use the survivor's name unless they specifically want to. Stress that you will protect his and her identity. Uh, child marriage is one of a uh, serious child rights abuse and uh, one of GBV. Child marriage is a violation of human rights, of child rights. Young marriage girls face many difficulties such as early pregnancy. We must remember that every person under the age of 18 is considered a child unless stated otherwise in the applicable national leg legislations. Child and early marriage of forced marriage are considered GBV. So we often have to cover child marriage. When covering child marriage news, emphasize in our story that human marriage that child marriage is a crime and violation of basic human rights. Phrases cont containing sexism or sexist approach must be avoided. Life stories are important for convincing the public of the existence, prevalence, and depth of the problem of forced marriage. However, it can be painful for women and girls to recall their experience. Publishing stories of girls who were forced to marry at an early age and were able to extricate themselves from the marriage can inspire others. But the story should not give the impression that all girls in that position will have the same experience. So not all girls are lucky enough. And how about interviewing a child? Well, this is in fundamentally better not to interview a child. However, in certain circumstances, journalists might choose to do so. If such an interview is required, it must never take place without the presence of an adult who could be their parents or custodians, or in some specific cases, a teacher or someone working for a children's protection agency. Next. Oh, this is the stereotypes and thesis in visual because pictures portray means thousands of words. Gender also plays important role in visual communication. Stereotype and thesis can be found in photographs and video and explanatory graphic. They should not be encouraged or approved through NAS hasty decision making, what is acceptable, what is an ex expectable, acceptable. Uh, this, this image is very uh, portraying stereotype. In hospital, the nurses always women, girls, and the doctors always a, a man. So this is stereotypes. In the second, this is doctors stand in front of uh, female nurses. These pictures stereotypes the roles of women and men in the society. So we must be very careful when we choose pictures for publication. We must be aware of certain aspects to ensure we avoid them. So this is the right pictures, is a good, is a good. this is a female doctors accompanied by male and female nurses and they sit equally. So this is important as a journalist, as a photo editor to be careful in picking up all uh, pictures and video and uh, any graphic that will demeaning 
uh, uh, the roles of women in, in, in news. Next. So picking the right photograph, video, video and visual. Our choice of pictures, graphic and or footage is extremely important because these images strengthen the story and are sometimes more effective than the words. But, but if we want to develop our new stories from a gender sensitive approach, there are some traps that we must be careful not to fall into. There are some ethical consideration that all journalists should take into account always protect the anonymity of the GBV survivors, avoid choosing images that reproduce the certain cliches such as photographs or beaten women, never use sexy or sexuality evoking photograph for GBV news. Next. Oh, this is the important point that we must avoid when we trying to write gender insensitive reporting, avoid gender in, insensitive reporting. So this is the checklist. Are women views and voices sold equally? Are male and female subject treated equally? Have a variety of sources representing a broad, a broad spectrum of views been consulted? Does the coverage raise critical question as to why women are not represented? Does the coverage reflect a holistic and realistic view of women? Does the story challenge or reinforce stereotypes? Are these stereotypes blatant or subtle? Does the story exonerate the perpetrators? perpetrators? Are all subjects treated with dignity? Are the experiences and concerns of women belittled? Is your story fair, accurate, and balanced? Is there adequate context and balance and analysis, which includes going beyond the event to highlight the underlying issue? Does your article contain language that is inclusive of men and women? For instance, are gender neutral terms used instead of gender biased terms? Are women and men equally represented? Are women portrayed as the survivors? Are women portrayed as active and or passive? Do image emphasize or exaggerate physical or sexual aspect? Does the image degrade the dignity of women? This is, uh, I think, a very important checklist for us as reporters, as writers, to avoid gender insensitive reporting. I think we have to stop here and then we can start uh, sharing each other experience. Many thanks, Soba. Uh, over to you, Soba. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita, for such a beautiful and extensive explanation of what ethical journalism should look like, not to be judgmental, dismantling stereotype attributes and looking at every issue with a gender sensitive lens. Now we open for question and answers. We have a lot many comments and questions already. Uh, Nahid uh, Khalid uh, wants to know uh, if there are more female students or male students who study journalism, or is the poor male female ratio in media also linked to girls dropping out of school? Uh, maybe Rita? Exactly. Or, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe yeah. some other expert expert can also uh, uh, jump in because yes, this yes. is exactly women mostly drop out school to get married. Exactly, right, right. And and then also they are supposed to take up. Yesterday, Maitri was uh, telling in her presentation. She's a very senior journalist in India. That you know, certain um, professions are again, as Rita also mentioned, they are put into boxes. These professions are good for women. These are good for uh, men. And uh, Maitre was uh, sharing her own experience that in her family, they did not think that uh, she should be into this profession because it means staying out late, having a very irregular working hours. So that also determines, that is the stereotype, I think, uh, which is being perpetrated. Uh, 
A mentioned to me from PNG says she talks about the checklist uh, Rita had uh, mentioned for media organizations to have. And she says it's a very important list, but barely any organization has these committees unless it is a legal thing in that country. What do you have? Exactly. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, it depends on uh, the news organization and the country. Do they have legal umbrella for protecting the journalists, especially female journalists, and whether they are uh, gender sensitive enough, uh, uh, whether they also imply gender mainstreaming in the newsroom, which is very rare. Mm -hmm. I have to admit it, R very rare. Varuni mm -hmm. from Thailand uh, wants to know how do we engage media in addressing patriarchy within the media to make progress on gender sensitive issues and gender use of gender sensitive language also. Because she says that very often uh, this gender insensitive language is used without even realizing that, is, is, that it is insensitive or it is fueling gender stereotypes. This so, is very true. Yes. This yes, is sir. very true because we live in a patriarchy society. We live in the Asia and Pacific region where male are always on top and we female journalists in inferior position. So in any newsroom, we still struggle to fight against patriarchy uh, culture, be it uh, with our own college or our supervisors or our boss or our news sources. We're still struggling to fight against that. Maybe uh, other uh, journalists from other country can uh, jump in and share their experience how to deal with patriarchy in their own newsroom and in their society. Yes, we will come, yes, we will come to that. Yes, Rita. Amira says that, again, she talks about the committees that where, even where the committees are there, they do not hold meetings. And so their responsibility and accountability should be enforced. That even if just form, forming a committee, the committees is the first step, but then accountability should be there as well. Uh, uh, then this, this, yes. Yeah. yes, Rita, please continue. Uh, yeah, many newsroom in my country, uh, they have set up committee, but uh, we don't know whether they are effective or not, and then we don't have any uh, organizations to take them accountable, but uh, there are some uh, strong news organization in Indonesia also uh, checking uh, with every uh, news media organization to see whether they have set up uh, the committee and they apply the gender uh, mainstreaming in, the, in their newsroom. And it start uh, since uh, the, the 2000, yeah, uh, and, and they are very active now, and uh, we see uh, a very significant progress in gender mainstreaming in Indonesia. I don't know in other countries, maybe all our friends here can share their experience, so I really want to learn about that uh, from our uh, participant here, uh, how they cope with uh, gender mainstreaming in the newsroom, so I really want to hear uh, from our colleagues here. Uh, and um, uh, Noor Jang Shah has an important point to make. Uh, Noor says we only uh, talk of the gender perspective from male and female, which, but we should not leave the issues of LGBTIQ communities behind. So these groups should also be considered while uh, we are talking of gender justice and gender equality. Exactly, I'm so sorry. I didn't uh, include uh, uh, our uh, LGBT friends, uh, but uh, it is very important issue that we should address. And uh, we have to be very uh, careful in covering, in uh, presenting them because uh, many of stigma uh, surrounding uh, them. And uh, now we have to fight <coughs> against all the cliches, all stigma, uh, 
against this uh, community. So I, I do apologize for not including them. I'm do, I do apologize. Uh, no, no, it's, it's not about apologizing. It is just uh, making sure that uh, we do not, uh, they are not left behind because that they are, they are part of that important exactly. part of, yes, yes. Exactly, exactly. I agree. And, uh, we have uh, uh, a comment rather from Kai Liago Valido that women journalists struggle to prove themselves in the field. And even when there are women journalists in a media house or representing some media, they get assigned for lifestyle, entertainment pages and beats and not for say the police beat or even the other beats are usually not assigned to them. Basically they are thought fit for lifestyle and entertainment. Rita, what do you have to say to that? Oh, I agree. I agree with you. But also uh, we have to, uh, well, in the past, uh, women are also, uh, that is stereotyping of female journalists. Oh, we have to uh, go to the bit like lifestyle, fashion, or, or cooking, recipe, uh, whatever. But I think we have to uh, explore more about this lifestyle uh, bit because we can do more like fashion. Fashion, we can, uh, we can write fashion from very different perspective, from environmental issue, how they, how fashion industry pollute uh, uh, the earth, and how women, uh, female fashion designer, excels. So we can also uh, uh, stress the importance of people uh, uh, in fashion industry, in cooking industry. So it is not a, a, a right bit it is a very meaningful bit as long as we understand how to uh, expose how to present women in their uh, in their industry so i think uh, there is not a light or strong bit as long as we can uh, put our perspective gender perspective in every coverage of uh, any issue even in lifestyle issue so i i don't agree that lifestyle issue is light it is meaningful as long as we have a gender perspective, we have a deep knowledge like cooking, the history of Indian cuisines, how uh, Indian cuisine spread into the world. That is history, that is politics, that is cultures, that is lifestyle. So I think there is no light bit uh, for female journalists as long as we really, really learn about this issue and present it in a very broad angle. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Anne Nguyen says, uh, Anne is from Vietnam. I think currently she's in Australia, that social justice is still a big issue in many developing countries. So lot of work and efforts for all of us to bring justice for all. And stereotypes are often hidden under what we call socio-cultural norms. And, uh, they are uh, they are being fed into people generation after generation, including us as receivers of knowledge. So that is, I think, where the unlearning and relearning process should start. Yes, Rita. Sorry, I can't. It is true, very true. Uh, it is blanket in social, traditional, and religious norm. All the stereotypes all the taboo. Yeah. So we have to uh, open the blankets uh, by, you know, educating the people, educating our audience and changing our ways to write, our ways to communicate. That is fighting the stereotypes, fighting patriarchy, fighting gender equality, inequality. So this is our job as a journalist is to educate people also, to provide what is good and what's right, what is acceptable, what is unacceptable in our society. I think, uh, I hope that it, we can also paving ways to creating social, more justice social uh, environment. Thank you. And Mahisur Rashtri has uh, stresses upon the same thing, that there are things that we have been learning from our childhood. And we didn't even realize or think that these are gender sensitive issues until now. 
So it is a good thing that we are all trying to get over those normalized stereotypes and we are trying to denormalize them. So thank you very much, Rita, for this very, very, uh, very, very productive and informative uh, session of uh, your presentation.